electric shock um, electric shock is a phenomenon that happens when electric current passes through the body the actual measure of the electrocution uh, is related to amperes uh, which is unit current flowing through per unit time uh, depending on the uh, body's resistance and voltage of the source the current passing through our body may vary uh, this can be related using ohm's law ohm's law uh, is given as v equals ir v in here we take as source voltage um, usually the source voltage uh, varies from 200 uh, to 240 volts in russia is 220 volts um, resistance uh, in uh, and that depends on the type of body for example in a wet body the resistance is 500 ohms whereas in a dry body the resistance is uh, 1000 ohms uh, the severity of the damage caused by the current depends on following factors the voltage length of time in contact with the source overall health of the person uh, electricity is a uh, path through your body uh, it always chooses the path of least resistance uh, hence if it happens to be a vital organ in this case it's very risky uh, and also it depends on the type of current uh, usually alternating currents are more dangerous because they cause muscle spasm and uh, the victim uh, will latch on to the source of current uh, this table illustrates the uh, reaction in response to the amount of current coursing through the body. Um, usually in a household um, appliance for an adult uh, the range varies from 30 to 150 milliamps. However, if it's uh, children because since they have uh, smaller bodies and uh, their resistance is quite less, uh, they may even suffer a damage of uh, current passing through at a rate of 10 amps which may result in cardiac arrest and severe burn so this is a setup of um, commercial um, power supply uh, here this is the source uh, on the left side in the center we have the transmission line where high voltages can be seen and on the right side we can see a uh, consumer where the uh, voltage would be around 220 volts um, electroporation is the cellular mechanism through which um, the damage to the organs are done. This occurs due to disruption of membrane function uh, due to formation of micropores and um, membranolysis will take place. As a result, uh, the barrier function of the membrane is lost and uh, cells become necrotized, eventually leading to organ failure. Uh, administering first aid. Uh, before administering first aid, we must protect ourselves. So initially, we should not engage the victim. Uh, we must try to eliminate the source. Uh, for this purpose, we must initially try to turn off the source of current. Uh, if it's not possible, we must move away the source of current from the victim using a non-conducting object. Uh, it may be uh, in domestic uh, household uh, places. We may choose a broom, a wooden broom, which is not wet. Uh, however, if the source, uh, for example, a high voltage uh, cables, um, if the source has very high voltage, in this case, we will not engage. We will keep 20 feet away from the patient and uh, we will only call the emergency, local emergency services. In Russia, it's uh, 112. Um, so when we are uh, if we when we uh, make sure that the patient uh, has been cleared of the source uh, we will start evaluating the patient using abc criteria airway breathing circulation if uh, the cardiovascular function and respiratory functions are compromised in this case we will begin cpr uh, if it's not a necessary if cpr is not necessary we will go ahead and um, see if the patient is um, conscious uh, and we'll uh, try to see if there are any um, damages in his body. Uh, initially, we must identify the entry wound and the exit wound. Uh, this is very crucial because uh, it will help us in um, understanding the course of the current and uh, we may even predict uh, which organs may be damaged. Um, following that, we may um, try to find if there are any extensive burns, 
fractures uh, or any other complications related to it so um, the following are the possible symptoms of um, electric shock um, loss of consciousness not uh, may all, always be uh, prevalent but uh, however even the patient when the patient is conscious they may have suffered uh, organ damage uh, so we have to keep that in mind muscle spasms uh, burns uh, burns may be extensive or they may be limited to the area of entry and exit um, seizures arrhythmia dyspnea and paresthesia here we see uh, damage in um, cornea this is um, cataract formed after burn it's stellate shaped cataract this is uh, an entry point of um, electric uh, current you can see that the wound is concentric uh, in this picture we can see the entry wound and the exit wound in a patient these are uh, extensive burns caused by uh, electric shock injury uh, this is um, back, uh, uh, this is due to uh, lightning um, at damage uh, on the left side we can see vascular response to uh, lightning strike on the right side we can see extensive burn and uh, scar formation after lightning strike uh, for treatment uh, in the, uh, for patient who has suffered shock possible that they have suffered burn also so treatment for burn is applied um, fluid therapy is given uh, to resuscitate uh, fluid resuscitation um, fresh frozen plasma is administered uh, albumin is given um, for application of um, uh, to prevent uh, infection uh, we apply antibiotic ointment and uh, sterile dressings are used to cover the wound um, pain medications are given in, in order for uh, patient comfort um, tetanus shots are given depending on the source of shock if it's a penetrating wound or if there's fracture tetanus shots are favored thank you very much for your attention